On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, winter has hit the United States. That means we're going to be discussing liquefied natural gas tankers, the Jones Act, and New England. I'm your host, Sal Mercaglano. So every winter, when it gets a little cool in New England, this issue hits the news and it comes across social media in full force. And that is the transportation of liquefied natural gas by tankers into Boston because of a energy shortage that New England is having. And what always happens and continues to happen is it becomes a target for the repeal of the Merchant Marine Act of 1920, specifically Section 27 of the Jones Act, which prohibits the transportation of goods between U.S. ports in foreign vessels. So let's break this down. So the most recent iteration I've seen of this was on Twitter by Stephen Sapozinski, uh, who's a Singapore-based Bloomberg business reporter, and he covers energy and commodities, particularly LNG. And he posted a series of tweets, which I have included here, and he's talking about several issues that are at play. And the big one that he's talking about is for the first time ever in the history of the United States. December, we have basically eclipsed the export of liquefied natural gas, we become the biggest exporter, eclipsing both Australia and Qatar in the movement of them. And he has a chart there with the Simpsons, kudos on the Simpsons reference. Uh, he goes on here to talk about the fact that LNG has increased tremendously since 2016, which is true. If you go back to 2015, we exported 1 billion cubic feet of LNG this past year, 2020, it's 10.8 billion cubic feet. So we've increased over tenfold our export of liquefied natural gas. And he has a chart here that shows that export in some detail, particularly in the lower 48 states. He goes on here to talk about that this is gonna be a big competitive issue between us and Qatar. And then he discusses several issues here and he links to an article that talks about the issue of why this impacts New England. The big issue in this article has to do with the fact that basically New England has shut half their nuclear power plants. The Pilgrim plant and the Vermont Yankee plant have been shut down. That has curtailed energy production in New England, and they've shifted over to more conventional power production, which is largely powered by liquefied natural gas. The best way to get liquefied natural gas is by pipeline. Pipeline is how we ship liquefied natural gas around the country, even around local areas and communities. However, the state of New York, under the previous governor, Andrew Cuomo, has prohibited the laying of pipeline from Pennsylvania and central New York into New England, meaning that New England has been cut off from natural gas. The reason for this is a variety of different things, environmental, uh, uh, safety issues. I largely think it has to do with the New England Patriots and the Boston Red Sox, and New York doesn't like them. But whatever. Suffice it to say that New England does not have access to liquefied natural gas by pipeline, so they have to import it by sea to meet the peak times of consumption, which is in the winter. So New England largely gets this roughly between 40 and 50 uh, uh, million cubic feet of natural gas from a facility in Trinidad and Tobago. Trinidad and Tobago is a large exporter, nowhere near the, the scale of Australia, Qatar, or the United States. But prior to U.S. exporting, it was a bit, fairly significant exporter. And the U.S. exports uh, receives it from Trinidad and Tobago. Now, understand, even if you make this all a wash, if, 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 for example, you're able to use a foreign flag LNG carrier to haul LNG out of Houston, Texas, Louisiana area, it's still cheaper to get out of Trinidad, Tobago, because Trinidad, Tobago is closer to Boston than the U.S. Gulf Coast by sea miles. And again, this is a Mercator map. It, it's, it's altered. You don't have the curve. It's just it, it, it's a terrible map. I've, I, I say this time and time again. You need a globe, people. Get a globe because that shows you the real distance between things. But Trinidad Tobago is where most of that gas comes from. Now, guaranteed, if they mention this story, this story will be attached to it somewhere, and it was in, in, in this thread, this story from 2018, where a tanker carrying liquefied natural gas from Russia's Arctic arrives in Boston. Yes, Boston, you are using commie LNG. Well, not communist, because Russia hasn't been communist since... 
one, uh, but it's Russian gas, but it's one tanker that came in 2018. And to tell you the truth, the LNG was offloaded, loaded onto several different tankers. So whether or not it was actual Russian LNG or other LNG, it's hard to tell. If you go to the 2018 Department of Energy report for that year, you'll notice that there is no Russian imports into the United States. It has United Kingdom where that tanker was. And if you go to that tanker specifically right here, the gasless, you'll see it came out of the United Kingdom into Everett, Massachusetts with 3.1 million cubic feet of liquefied natural gas. But it's also interesting to note that almost all the natural gas that comes into this country, and again, this is 2018, comes into Everett, Massachusetts, again, because Massachusetts is cut off from this. If you look at the most recent 2020 report, same thing. The large majority of imported gas into the United States comes in to Everett uh, facility in Massachusetts. Now, the EIA, which is the uh, Energy Information Age, uh, Administration under the Department of Energy, they have all these great reports, and I'll link them into the show notes, shows you how U.S. exports of LNG have just absolutely ballooned, taken off, substantially cutting our imports, making us an energy exporter. During the Trump administration, one of the big things he did was advocate this export of energy as a useful tool. And you'll see that we're hitting right now almost over 10 million cubic, uh, 10 billion cubic feet of LNG going out. The largest importers of our natural gas, number one is Korea, then Japan, China, Spain, and the United Kingdom. So, I mean, I mean the three biggest ship producers in the world, Japan, China, and Korea, are importing our natural gas, and then Europe. Is importing. As a matter of fact, there's been a lot of stories about the fact that because of the cutoff and the reduction in natural gas coming from Russia into Europe, the increase in American exports of LNG to Europe has basically picked up that slack. Now, it's interesting to note that the price of LNG, which was sky high back in the mid-2010s, uh, you're talking about double digits per thousand cubic feet, fell Tremendously. I mean, all of a sudden LNG fell at a, 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 it was down to $4 or something per thousand cubic feet, has now proceeded to climb. This is the most recent report showing the cost of LNG in October of this past year at $9.98 per thousand cubic feet, up quite a bit, up quite a bit. And so one of the things we're seeing is this is a, a revenue generating element for us. And LNG export has been a major issue in the previous Trump administration and potentially in the current Biden administration. Now, the LNG fleet has been increasing over the years. We've, we've seen it. Uh, LNG carriers have been around since the 60s. And as a matter of fact, the United States was one of the very first builders of LNGs. There was a substantial fleet built in the 70s in the United States at uh, General Dynamics Quincy Yard, Newport News Shipyard, which is still in existence, and Avondale Shipyard. These ships were built under the Merchant Marine Act of 1970. They were used in international uh, transportation, so they fell under the construction and operational differential subsidies of the old Merchant Marine Act of 1936. And so the U.S. has operated LNGs in the past. Some of these vessels are still out there. None of them are currently under the U.S. flag. Most LNGs are operated by several entities out there. Qatar operates a very large fleet of them, either under Qatar gas, as indicated here, or under the uh, Nakalat uh, company. Uh, they run about 66, uh, 69 LNG carriers. And Savkomflot, which is the Russian fleet, operates a large fleet of LNGs, including ships such as the Christopher de Marengue, which is a uh, ice-strengthened LNG carrier. It operates in the Arctic at the Yamal uh, facility, and Korea is building these vessels for the Russians uh, right now. Uh, if you look at the Russian fleet, it's a pretty substantial fleet. They're building a, a pretty uh, impressive entity. But right now, the U.S. does not have an LNG fleet. And one of the things that you're hearing is to meet the demand coming into New England is to waive the Jones Act to allow LNG carriers to go into Houston and Texas and Louisiana and load LNG and carry it up to Boston. And 
I would differ with that. And instead, I will give you why I think we shouldn't do it. And more importantly, my plan, which is not going to make everybody very happy. So my plan, which I put on Twitter, uh, makes nobody happy, but that's what you call a compromise plan. Those who oppose the Jones Act won't like it because it's going to require some money and they hate that because they argue they're libertarians, they believe in small government, but in truth, what they want is the cheapest they can get, but that sacrifices elements, I would argue, of national security. Those who support the Jones Act won't like it because it involves waiving the Jones Act temporarily. So let me lay out my plan to you. So instead of having foreign vessels bring foreign LNG into basically Boston, what I would recommend is this, let's reflag some LNG carriers into the US fleet. Now that would mean that the, the ships are foreign built, but they would go under a US corporation, US flag with US mariners. And we set a time of five years on that, five years on that vessel. As those vessels come in, we place a surcharge on the export of LNG by foreign carriers. Now, people will tell me that hurts people. I actually had somebody tell me that it hurt people. Their definition of hurt is different than my definition of hurt. Uh, a few pennies per thousand cubic foot of LNG being exported overseas to me doesn't hurt. That's a tax because if that's your definition of hurt, I've been killed by the government multiple times over the years paying FICA. But we put this tax, that money goes into a specific fund that can be used to pay or better yet be provide low interest loans. And again, the government provides low interest loans to banks, to corporations everywhere, provide a low interest loan that could be amortized over 20 years of a life of a vessel, even though it'll cost more to build that vessel in the United States, that cost can be defrayed. Also, we can make treaties and agreements with countries who are our biggest importers of LNG. Number one, it's South Korea. Who's the biggest constructor of LNGs in the world? South Korea. So we can get a design for an LNG from South Korea, build that vessel here in the United States, defray the, the design construction costs a bit and start building those vessels. And again, I'm talking about a couple of pennies per thousand cubic feet going out. And if you tell me you, we can't afford that, again, just look at the cost of LNG right now. I got it right here, sorry. Look at the cost of LNG, how it's increased from over $4 in 2015 up to $9.98. So yeah, it, it's going to be more expensive, but again, we're talking about several pennies on this. And by the way, we're not the ones paying it. It's the importers of our LNG. You use that to finance the new LNGs. The LNGs go into operation. And as they go into operation, you phase out the foreign bills. U.S. LNGs, hauling U.S. LNG for U.S. That's great. And I love my gift there. I always use that gift when I got to talk about the United States. But let me put it clear. There's a couple of other things that this does. One of the things it does is it puts shipbuilding back in the United States. Let's start building. We didn't build any Jones Act vessels last year in the United States. We need to start building again. So let's do it with LNG. It provides us a core fleet of LNG carriers so that if the foreign fleets out of Qatar, out of, you know, wherever they're chartered, decide to go haul Australian, Qatari, uh, uh, Russian, Trinidad LNG, we still have a core U.S. LNG fleet. It gives us security. It puts mariners to work. It puts shipyards to work, puts repair facilities to work. This benefits not just the U.S. commercial merchant marine, but the U.S. Navy, because it gives more shipyards and repair facilities. It benefits the Coast Guard, NOAA, the Army, which actually has a watercraft fleet. It, it's a be big benefit for us. And it gives us energy security that we can transport part of our LNG. We can use it diplomatically. We can use it in times of crisis. We can use it when Boston needs LNG. We can haul it there between ports without having to get a waiver. This benefits us tremendously. Is there a cost associated with it? Yeah. Is it a huge cost? No. Again, let's give U.S. companies, shipping companies, tax incentives. You know, why are U.S. mariners operating in the international environment paying income tax, for example? Let's defray that. Let's defer that cost so companies don't have to pay that amount of money into taxes for their mariners. They can keep that. Operating costs are largely geared by mariners, by workers. Let's lower that cost. Let's give an incentive, because again, this is a national security issue, give them a deferment of some kind on part of their taxes, corporate taxes. We can make this work. You just have to be willing to take these chances. Understand 
Those who oppose the Jones Act hate this because it's not what they want, a pure repeal of the Jones Act. It, those who support the Jones Act don't like this because it involves a waiver, yet it's a finite waiver, but they believe any crack in the Jones Act will open up the, the floodgates and it happens. But let me put it why this is important to everyone in the United States, particularly those of you in Boston. Is our favorite marine traffic? Always a hats off to everybody at marine traffic. Uh, there are three LNG carriers sitting out here outside of Boston right now. The Exemplar, which is uh, off the coast right here, a Belgian flagged LNG carrier uh, right here. The Cadiz Knutsen, a Spanish flagged LNG carrier and the SW Tropez one Panamanian registered um, LNG carrier. And to me, I think safety concerns, it's great to have American crews that are licensed by the Coast Guard, have to go through security background checks, all that, that adds to this. And plus, not just the safety concerns of Boston, but it's good to have, again, American ships with American crews that can execute American economic policy. I don't by any means think 100% of our LNG should be exported by US flag vessels. That, that's impossibility. We don't even talk about that. However, we should get back into the LNG business. We were in the LNG business. We were the LNG business. We were operating the first LNGs. We built the first LNGs. There's no reason we can't build them. Now understand, people are gonna come out and sit there and say, these are gonna be four or five times more expensive than those built overseas. That's if you're building one. If you're deciding to build a fleet of them, you can defray those costs, you can get it lower. And again, my deal here is let's make a deal with Korea on the importation of LNG. They need it. Uh, China needs LNG. They're designing LNG tankers. We can get LNG tanker designs. And the designing is one of the big elements. We can work with other shipyards overseas to talk about how to design these vessels. And again, we need to make changes. You have to change the policy. There are those who say, rip the Band-Aid off the Jones Act, let's get rid of it and see what happens. My argument then is, how do you do strategic sea lift in time of war? What happens to our maritime industrial base? And we literally put ourselves in the position we found ourselves when we wrote the Jones Act back in 1920, except we've removed the coastal fleet, which was the one thing that helped us in World War I. And we're more at play here to foreign companies and elements. And again, look what's happening right now with the nine big container ship companies who are coming and hauling our containers in and out of the United States, not hauling US exports. We got to load potatoes into a 747 and fly them to Japan for McDonald's because we can't load a dozen containers with potatoes and get them to Japan because the container companies don't want American exports. So that's my take on winter in New England with LNG tankers, the Jones Act. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like, please subscribe, please share across social media, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to send it to everybody who opposes the Jones Act because it will make them crazy. And that's the best gift you can give to me on this New Year's. Until our next video, Sal, signing off.